see you. I thought you were going to meet me at Cedars. I'm sorry. I got, I got distracted. How's Buzz? Oh, you know, Buzz is a tough guy, but a heart attack's a heart attack. It just scared me to see him looking so vulnerable. And you didn't want to stay with him? No, I said that I'd check in with him later. You know what? It's still not too late to get down to the bank, sign some papers, get your trust fund, shake up the bank a little bit. You know, Reva, I, I told you no. Harley. You have no right to be here. Get out! This doesn't help. Harley, okay? please. You can get out of here, too, if you're going to back him up. I'm not backing him up. What are you talking about? Gus, let me... Can you just shut your mouth, Philip? My father wouldn't even be in this hospital if it wasn't for you! Harley, hey, hey. You are sick. You are Harley. sick. Something happened to you. You are not well. Okay. And I'll tell you, it's only a matter of time before they lock you up again. You know, I was ready to put an end to all of this. That's why I came down here, to see what I could do to help. What is that? It's a contract, relinquishing all of my rights to the property, to the land the company sits on. I was going to give this to Buzz. I was going to sign it and let you get on with your life. OK, OK, so you know, just, just sign it and, and hand it over. Give it to me. No. No, I think I've changed my mind. Uh, right this way, ma'am. Uh, oh, here it is. Here's your seat right here. There you go. I hope it's a comfortable one because you're going to be sitting in it for a while. That is, unless you find yourself somewhere over the middle of the Atlantic and decide you want to step out for some air, then by all means be my guest. Oh, come on. You miss me already. I can feel it. You're going back to Europe, Dinah, and you're going to forget all about Springfield. Oh, and, uh, for the record, Cassie Winslow is not going to ruin me. As a matter of fact, Cassie Winslow is not going to do anything to me because I am not interested in her. Okay. Have a nice flight. Jeffrey. I know you just like you know me. Okay, this is the part where I'm supposed to ask you what that means. Recruiting me to play her. Did you really need all that help for your undercover work, or was it just to get a taste of something you would never have? Oh, trust me. You have cured me from anything that I might have felt. Meanwhile, this obsession that you have with her, it's like food and water for you. So get over the obsession, Dinah and get a new life, okay? Likewise. Jeffrey, likewise. Was it something I said? You were snoring. Cassie, about last night and this morning hey, and... Hey, we're supposed to put that behind us, okay? I want to, Cassie. Edmund, you have nothing to worry about. You're all I want. Stay right where you are. Champagne is on the way. Oh, wait. I have a better idea. Meet me in the shower. Mmm. Give me five minutes. No more than five. Don't use all the hot water. It's going to be plenty hot when you get in there. you do that with my father still in the hospital bed? Well, I'm sorry about Buzz, but that's not my fault, and I don't need to be attacked. What's the matter with you, man? What, do you think I'm going to stand here and let her spit in my face and then give her a gift? Just be a decent person. This is who you wish was your brother your whole life? 
I came here to make peace, to be civil. Her father just had a heart attack, Yes, Philip. and you can blame me for that all you like, but I didn't clog Buzz's arteries. His own food did that. Greasy burgers twice a day, every day. You know, the people of this town ought to thank me for knocking company oh, down. Right? Oh, what? Hey, 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 what is going hurry. on here? What is this? How does it feel, Rick? How does it feel to have the devil as your best friend? You know what? Let's walk it off. I'm fine. I'm fine. I will do whatever I have to to hurt you. You are pathetic. Oh, those are nice words for the father of your child. You don't deserve his love. What's going on here? Oh, I don't know. I guess I have a pension for collecting nutty ex-wives. Don't worry about wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, Buzz almost died here. I mean, this isn't like you. What's going on? Well, Rick, why don't you tell me what would be more like me? Why don't you start off by treating me like a friend? And what is this I hear about you knocking company to the ground? What are you thinking? That place is a Springfield institution. Do, do I come in here and tell you how to treat your patients? No, but what does that have to right, do then with I would, I would appreciate it if you didn't presume to tell me how to run my business. Well, my business is trying to help the people of this town. Philip, what are you doing? Well, at the moment, I'm choking on that sanctimonious little bit you just threw my way. Look, Rick, just trust me, okay? Just be my friend. Don't believe everything you hear everybody saying about me. Yeah, go on. Get out of here. And you get out of here, too. Alan's new ambulance chaser. I am trying to help you, okay? You had about a million chances to do that, and you blew it. It's too late for that now. Rick. How is my dad doing, there's, really? There's no change. Um, the angioplasty is scheduled right after the test results come back. And are you okay? I'm sorry. That, that, was, that was so bizarre. I, I wish I could tell you what's going on with him, but the, I can't. The fact that he lost his mind or that he never found it again? It's no different. Spaldings will always be the Spaldings. That is if the rest of us let them get away with it. It's no big deal, Sandy. You go down there, you show them some ID, and the trust fund is yours. Hey, your father wanted you to have the money. It was his way of showing you that he never forgot about you. I mean, I'm lucky. I have you in my life, but Richard was robbed of that opportunity. Oh, oh, I was expecting that. <sighs> Hello. Yeah, she is. Hold on a second. It's for you. We're not done yet. Hello. Oh, my God. Baby, how are you? Uh, yes, he's standing right here. It's a little surprise. Oh. No, he was acting so weird, I didn't know what was going on with him. So, surprise. Oh, Shane. <laughs> yes. Oh, and uh, don't even think about trying to get off this plane because I got agents surrounding it all over the place and they're not going to go anywhere until this little birdie is up in the air, okay? Excuse me, sir. Yeah. You'll have to sit for takeoff? Okay, I'm just seeing this passenger off, all right? Okay, we're ready to leave the gate. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, this is goodbye. Yeah, this is goodbye and that's a good thing if you value your freedom. It wasn't all that bad, was it, Jeffrey? I mean, it was a little unconventional, but... It did mean something, didn't it? Goodbye, Dinah. Come on. One more kiss. For the road. For the sky. Cassie's numbers. Mm-hmm. I called her. Told her I worked for you. And what did you say? I told her that you wanted to meet her at the Springfield Inn to discuss the case. And why did you say that? Well, I just wanted to see how fast she would run. It's no big deal. I'll keep this. 
What do you want? What do you really want? I want to go back to my job, and I want to go back to my life. But you can't, can you? Because no matter how much you want to stay away, you need to be close to Cassie to protect her. When did you call her, Dinah? She's expecting you. Scamper off. A little funny. This woman is not to go anywhere. She's to stay in her seat, okay? And if you've got any problems with her, any problems at all, you contact security on the ground immediately. Do you understand that? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Goodbye. I hope you find what you're looking for. Ma'am, um, do you have a kosher meal? We always have extras, just in case. Where the hell have you been? I was beginning to think you weren't going to get on board. Hey, hold up a second. Well, you, you have really lost all control over Harley, haven't First you? of all, don't blame her. And secondly, oh, whoa, whoa, secondly wait, nobody you're, controls you're her. You're not going to defend her, are you? The only thing that's indefensible is you acting like an idiot, coming in here, her father's uh, practically dying, and you're waving around a piece of paper like you're teasing her. She attacked me. No, you're torturing her. Yeah, <laughs> the way you would like to be able to after what she did to you. No, I never feel like that with her. Well, then you should. She tore your life apart. Buzz almost died, Philippa. What is the matter with you? Look, my thoughts are with Buzz. I don't wish him any harm. As long as he doesn't try to harm me, that's the Spalding way. You should know that by now. What did the Coopers ever really do to you? Don't pretend that you are so different, Gus. Aren't you the guy who fabricated all that evidence when you were working for the FBI? You're just as ruthless and vindictive as anybody in this family. I'm nothing like you, Philip. Well, Harley seems to think you are. My advice is to embrace it. Look, you've proven your point, okay? So just, just call it off and stop punishing them. It's not about punishment. It's about knowing who you are. Yeah? Who are you? I'm Philip Spaulding. Who are you? Yeah, it's me. You know that alternate plan that we had in place? I want to go with that. Move the schedule up. Oh, that's wonderful, sweetie. <laughs> Just know that I say a prayer for you every single night. I know, but it's the accidental stuff that makes me worry. Just keep the eyes in the back of your head, okay? What? Honey, speak up. I can barely hear. Uh, oh, I know. I love you, too. Yes, I'll tell him, but he's not here right now. He's on some business thing. Just know how much your daddy loves you, too. Sh Shane? Uh, honey, I... <sighs> Lost the connection. Thank you. <laughs> He did sound pretty good, didn't he? Oh, I'm just so grateful I got to hear his voice. So when did you arrange all of this? Well, Shane and I have been working on it for a while. You can't just drop everything for a chat. We're trying to plan it down to the last minute. So is that why you didn't want to go to the bank? Yeah, consider it a birthday present from me to you. I mean, the mother does all the work. She deserves it more, right? Well, I don't know how much I deserve, seeing as I missed a lot of your birthdays. Well, you're here for this one. And the bank's open all week. We can sign those papers anytime. Oh, I know. I just really wanted you to have your trust fund signed over to you on your birthday. You're going to get that money. Hey! Hi, hey, Sandy! Oh, hey! Oh, oh, hey! 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 Yeah, I wasn't going to come, but uh, my dad thought I needed a break. Well, I'm glad you're here, and you missed Shane's phone call just now. Oh. I miss him so much. I miss him, too. 
But you know what? I have this one to keep me company. <laughs> so, you were serious about the birthday party thing. Wow. Oh, yeah, birthdays are a mother's prerogative, so just be a good boy and accept your fate. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Bye. Hey, happy birthday. Hi, you Sam and Ed. Oh, thank you. Okay, Back you know what? Let's move in. Yes. Go in, go in. Go in, go in, go in. Go in. <laughs> You two seem happy. Yeah, well, I guess I am. Well, what would the reason for that be? Wouldn't have anything to do with that nice young man over there, would it? Reva. Are you two back together again? No. You know, I'm starting to think, why shouldn't we be? Hello? Cassie? Hello? Hey, Edmund. No, not Edmund. I is it just me, or do we seem to meet like this a lot? You know, one or both of us all wet and uh, <clears throat> in a towel. I haven't noticed. Well, I bet he has. How rude of me. I only brought two glasses. Well, then, Cassie, you'll need to leave, because Edmund and I, we need to be alone. All right, take it easy, everyone. I'm, you know, I'm just here because I need to give Mrs. Winslow an update. Look, as much as I would love to hear all about this, Blake just called me. Buzz Cooper just had a heart attack. Oh I have to get to the hospital. Well, go, Cassie. O'Neill can fill me in. I'll meet you at the hospital later. Well, you're on the time clock, Mr. O'Neill. Cassie should be dressed and out of here in about five minutes. Let's see what kind of story you can come up with by then. Oh, and bear in mind, I'm going to have lots of questions. Ma'am, we're about to take off. Something wrong? No, no, I just thought, never mind. Uh, buckle up. You bet. you and Philip have a nice chat? I'm just trying to make things right. I thought we had a nice moment earlier, you know? Moment? Inside with your dad. I just... I'm standing there and I, all I wanted to do is... I'm just trying to make my father feel better. Great. Here I am thinking that we were on the verge of remembering what we used to mean to each other. So, what? I'm just supposed to forget about everything and kiss and make up? No, I'm not saying that. I just thought maybe we could work on making this gap a little smaller. I don't see how that's possible. I know that you still love me, okay? I can see it in your eyes, so I'm not going to stop trying. We're, uh, Rick. Rick, what's going on? We're getting ready to send uh, Buzz to the cat plant. Okay, then what? We do an angiogram, and if we uh, find any blockage, which I'm pretty confident that we will, then we'll do an angioplasty on the spot. So now's a good time to see him. All right, thanks. Thanks, Rick. Well, no, you got that wrong. What do you mean demolition's been pushed up? No, the, the restaurant companies, it hasn't even been vacated yet. Well, when are they planning on doing that? Today? Your aunt and uncle have some really good music here. This is some classic stuff, Tam. Oh, check this one out. Uh, definitely, you can't go wrong with classic rock. Hey, do you have any of your CDs in the car? Uh, no, 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 no. That would be totally cheesy, Tammy. Me playing my music at the party. Since when did cheesy bother you? Tammy. It's one of the things I love about you. One of many. Yeah? Yeah. So 
So how cool are you getting Shane to call? Reva's walking on air. Well, I consider it my family duty. Mm. Speaking of family, how are you holding up? Yeah, I'm just trying really hard not to freak out, you know? I mean, uh, everything that happened with the wedding and company and Shane and, you know, my grandpa, it's, um, it's a lot, you know? I'm just, I just thought life was starting to get back to normal. Whatever that means. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it's better that I'm here. Rather than pacing back and forth at the hospital, I, I needed a break from worrying. I know what you mean. Hey, you know what I never asked you is, how come you didn't go with Shane? What Shane's doing, it's, uh, it's his. You know? His idea. His passion. You know, for a long time, you were his passion. Yeah. I know. And maybe we'll be together again someday. But for right now, Shane is searching for something kind of like his brother. Me? When you first came to Springfield, you kept quiet about who you were. You were searching for something yourself. You had to figure things out. I guess so. So, you figured out who you were supposed to be yet? I don't think it's cheesy at all. I mean, this is your fan base, man. If you're going to play your music, this is the place. Right. All right? Yes. Okay. All right. Just don't jump up on my dining room table and rip your shirt off or anything. <laughs> this is good, so try to hold it back. Okay. Be a good boy. Yeah, that's good. So what, you two have been hanging out all day together? Yeah, Joey took the day off to hang out with me. Mm, i got to keep my eye on you. I'm going to play your CD. No. Yes, no. I am. <laughs> so, you're my personal bodyguard and that's it? Well, you know I've been worried about you with this nutjob running around stealing your mom's identity. I know I'm gonna hate getting the wrong answer, but... Is that the only reason you're hanging with me? So? So? You having fun? Thank you, Reva. It's my pleasure. It's really not much of a party, but... <laughs> no, I mean... for everything. When I first came here, I didn't know what to expect, and you... Don't. Don't do that. You showed up here just at the right time for both of us. Are there things you can't tell me, Mr. O'Neill? Things you know that I don't? Edmund, the sheer tonnage of things that I know that you don't could stop a team of oxen in its tracks. So let's make this quick, shall we? All right, a few straightforward answers. We'll both be on our way. Well, Edmund, I wouldn't dream of being anything but truthful with you. What's that? I'm sorry? That weird look on your face, the thing you do with your mouth and your eyes. You trying to intimidate me or something? Oh, men like us are intimidated, Mr. O'Neill. We control from positions of strength. It's the game we play. Ah, a little club of our own, is it? Well, next time I won't forget to bring my little... Badge. Now, let me see if I have this straight. You had your assistant call Cassie to set up a meeting with you. Yeah, that's right. Name of the assistant? Edmund, come on. What Indulge is Indulge me. Edmund, I don't know who made the call. I farm out the calls. And with this meeting, you wanted to? I wanted to update kids. So why did you want to meet her. in a hotel room? Edmund, come on, man. I always meet people here. Keep things off the grid, you know. And the update? The update. The update. The news. The new news. Dewey beats Truman, Edmund, that sort of thing. Edmund, we're going to interview the suspect in D.C. I'm heading there now to do that. And you couldn't deliver that news over the telephone, sir? <sighs> you got something you want to say? Maybe I should meet with the suspect. A woman who's shaken up Cassie's life so much. A few well-placed words from you. I'm sorry, Edmund. No can do. But I understand the impulse. We all want to protect what's precious to us. Yes, we do, Mr. O'Neill. And at any cost. All right, Edmund, you got me. When I woke up this morning, it was my sole goal and purpose in life to come here and catch Cassie in a towel. Well, it wouldn't be the first time. But then you walked in and you caught us. Curses foiled again. Now, how is it that you always manage to uncover the plot of the diabolical conquest of Cassie? And here you thought you were so clever. You gotta let this go, man. This jealousy thing. It's doing you no good. Now, come on, I was thrown into Cassie head first with this case. A case to which you were assigned, yes? Yeah. 
I mean, no one wants this case to be over more than I do. But I'm curious about something, Mr. O'Neill. Yeah. How do you plan on wrapping things up with the federal government when you're on leave from the federal government? I spoke to one of your superior officers. He informed me you're no longer working in the field, which leaves me to assume that the only reason you're doing any of this is to be close to Cassie. You know, Edmund, you should avoid situations that you don't understand. Let's compromise, shall we? My people will take over this investigation and interrogate the suspect. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, and what would I get? Distance from Cassie. It's what you've been insisting you want all along. So, what's her name and where can I find her? All right, Ed. I'll tell you the truth if you think you can handle it. But I gotta warn you, you're not gonna like what you're gonna hear. Okay. I hate to leave, but I have to get back to see this. Will you do me a favor? Tell Harley and Frank that our prayers are with them and we'll get over there to check on them a little later. Yeah. Yeah, we can we can do it in shifts and make sure the Coopers get everything they need. Good yeah, point. well, I'm sure Mel's got Harley's back, but if you need anything, let me know. That would be great. Thank you. What? I've never really noticed it before, but you have your mother's eyes. Oh. <laughs> Why do you have to make me feel so bad for trying to do the right thing? Well, it would just be nice if you wanted to be with me, you know, for me. Did you have fun today? Did you? Yeah, just like we used to. Okay, so stop getting worked up. I'm not. Okay, I am. I just, I was thrown. Just all. stop it, okay? You don't have to make everything so complicated. What? Joey, it's Lizzie. Hey. Well, I was just checking in. What's up? Just trying to live my life. She's getting harder by the minute. I got here as soon as I could. Wasn't, um, wasn't Gus out here? Yeah, he just ran past me saying something about Spalding business. Yeah. What a shock. I am so glad I caught you, Joey. There's so much happening. Sorry, I should have checked in. No, it's okay. Are you all busy there, or what? Um, yeah, uh... Well, what are you doing? Well, some bad news. Buzz Cooper had a heart attack, so things are pretty tense around here. Oh my gosh, is he okay? I hope so. I think so. I mean, he's a really good guy. Well, tell Marie and I said I'm sorry. Now, ask me about me. What about you? I have been up one side of Manhattan and back down the other, talking up your CD to anybody who would listen. I think I'm starting to make some headway, though. That's, that's great. I want to hear all about it when you get back. But um, I'm kind of busy right now. It's Sandy's birthday and everything, and everyone's here. Joey, are you trying to get rid of me? I just don't want to be rude. Is Tammy there? There are a lot of people here. Look, I'll call you later. I miss you, Joey. Me too. Okay, bye. That was... Um... I know who that was. Look, Tammy, I had a really great time with you today. It was like... Lizzie didn't even exist? <laughs> I wasn't going to say that exactly. It was like old times. Yeah. Until now. Joey, be honest. Okay, have I been getting my hopes up for nothing? You know, you could cut the tension over there with a chainsaw. Mm. You know what this party needs? More single women? Oh, stop that. What? Cake. Oh, oh. Can the cake. women can the women jump out of oh, the cake? Oh, both no, of you that's... in the kitchen. I need help. Sandy, okay. grab the phone with Oh, got it. Yellow. Mr. Lewis, this is uh, Mr. Duncan from the Bank of Springfield. Yes? I was expecting Mrs. Lewis before closing. Um, we have a problem. Well, Reva's busy right now. Can I help you with something? Well, there's no easy way to put this, but um, we believe the boy claiming to be your wife's son is an imposter. What's going on? Huh? Where's Harley? I'm right Where's here, Daddy. Hey, don't worry, Rick says the procedure is a no-brainer. Yeah, well, you know what? You're going to be out of here in no time. Gus, did you... Do... He's just taking a call. Remember what I said. 
Daddy, we're, we're both here for you. Here for each other, you know. Look at me, you never know what's gonna happen. Don't waste your time on the small stuff. Well, sometimes the small stuff seems big. That's a trick life plays on you to see if you blink. Don't blink. Okay. Everybody, I love you. I'm sorry about you. Oh, Daddy, oh, come, come on. on. You're going to come out of this better than ever. <laughs> hey, look after the girls, okay? Of course, Mom. Uh, and Marina, Marina, keep an eye on him. Oh, you got it. We're yeah. all here for you. You know what the neat thing about being me is? All of you guys. We really do have to get going here, guys. I love you, Pop. You'll be fine. We'll be waiting, Grandpa. He's gonna be okay, all right? Is he? Yeah, you bet he is. You couldn't tell him, though. About what? Guess. I don't even know where he went. But he's not here. And the one thing my father wanted, the one thing, was for me and Gus to be by his side. And where is he taking care of Spalding business? Maybe it was an emergency. Arm. Well, this isn't. I swear, I, I don't even know who that man is anymore. And after today, I, I don't care. Are you the, uh, you're the foreman? Yeah. Yeah, Hi. who are you? I'm Gus Spalding. Uh, we've got to put the brakes on this thing. The demolition is not happening today, okay? On whose orders? On my orders. I answered directly to Philip Spaulding. He told me the place is empty. What, what? What is your name? Dave. Dave. Does the place look empty to you? No, it isn't. It's not vacated. We don't have the right paperwork. Okay. It's and the not owner my of this problem. place is in the hospital. I'm making it your problem. I'm making it your problem. I'm Alan Spaulding's son, and I am also the legal. I... There he is, right there. This guy said he was a Spaulding. Oh, finally, someone in charge. What's your name? I am a Spaulding. Yes, but I, I'm busy. Trying busy to... questioning local business. That's right. Uh huh. Hey, that's I, right. I, I look. I, I care about this place just like you do. Sure, sure you do. Yeah, 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 back off and let me handle it. Uh -huh. You want this town under your stuff? I like this place just like you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, like you do, okay? Your mommy had to go visit someone in the hospital, so I'm gonna go call her just to make sure everything's all right, okay? Man. You changed your hair. Yeah, I know. Do you like it? I thought you were going away. I would never do that, not without you. Come on. I'm tired of, you know, I'm tired of the games. I'm tired of it all. Hiding. Hiding the way I feel. But you know what the worst part of it is? What? Seeing her with you. Her? You know that I blow this thing way out of proportion, don't you? Right? The identity theft. <laughs> the need for security that only I could provide. And it's taken so long for us to capture anyone, hasn't it? You don't seem very convinced of your own story, Mr. O'Neill. Well, if I'm not, then why should you be? So then what are you saying? Oh, I think you know what I'm saying. <sighs> I want to be with her. So that's why I call her up and I schedule a meeting. And I want her to trust me. So that's why I make sure that she's nice and scared so that she'll believe in me. You've got to ask yourself, what won't I stoop to? Well, the answer to that is that I still haven't found the bottom. Why are you telling me all this? Why am I admitting it? Because I'm sick and tired. Every time I look over my shoulder, I see you there. Oh, don't get me wrong, the threat to Cassie is very real. But the other part, the part where I make sure that she's scared so that she'll get close to me and trust me, well, that's very real, too. So then you have feelings for her. Feelings? Oh, Edmund, it's much more than feelings. It's more like... desire. And I can't stop it. I can't turn it off. I can't pretend it doesn't exist. So where Cassie Winslow is concerned, I think I'm just gonna do whatever desire tells me to. 